What's up everybody, it's your boy Jay, and I'm here live and direct, and I'm going to give y'all some pointers on how to take the part 107 exam, give you some advice, but not only that, I'm gonna kinda tell you why I have the channel. I have the channel because I'm putting some things on there that shows my work. Um, I wanna get a portfolio, so I wanna show some of the properties I take, and how I edit them, color grade, and I want people to see what I do because I think that's going to advertise my work and then get me some jobs. I just passed my 107 probably two weeks ago. I passed the test and I'm going to tell y'all what it's all about. It's, now, before I get into that, I'm gonna tell you how I kind of started with this. When March happened, you know, the COVID-19 thing hit, nobody was out, we had to quarantine, so I wanted to get a hobby. So I've always liked to do videos, pictures, and things like that, so I bought a drone. Nobody was outside, so I got to practice a lot. Then I heard you can actually make money off of it. So when I heard that, I said, wow, doing what? People said you can work for a realtor, you can work doing power lines, you can work doing roof inspections, all kind of different places hire people that fly drones, but you have to pass your 107 exam and be certified. When I found that out, I said, fine. But then I seen all the stuff you need to know and I was kind of surprised. But then it made sense. You got to realize if you're going to be certified and you're going to make money off of it, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know about airspaces because you're a pilot now. You could fly in certain places and really cause some damage and do something that's unsafe. So you need to know what you're doing. You need to know weather reports and things like that. So what's the test about you ask? The test has a lot of sectional charts. It has weather reports, the METAR reports. It has rules and regulations, which a lot of people know. So that's the thing too. A lot of people have this misconception that the test is easy. To me, I don't think it's easy. And I feel like this. When I was in college and I went to take tests, if I don't have to study for it, then it's easy for me. There was tests where I took classes I took and I didn't have to study, I just knew the material. And then I took the test and passed, that's easy. But this one, this test, you have to study and know what you're doing because the test can get tricky. Now, you have to know section charts. You have to know how to read the legend. Now with the legend, the legend is there and it's gonna be there for the test. So some people might think, well, it's easy because you have it right there. But you have to realize you only have two hours to take this test, right? So if you don't know about the legend and where stuff is at, you're gonna be going back and forth, taking all the time and trying to figure this out. So what I suggest you do is learn the legend before you take that test so you know where to look and where everything is. Now, section of charts. You have to know the uh, air spaces. You gotta know class B, class C, D, E, G. You have to know these things because on the maps they give you on the test, you have to know where these airports and things are on the map. And the only way you can know that is from reading the legend and know what the magenta line is and what the blue lines are and then you have to know the dots and you know it's it's, it's slashes dots or whatever but um they're magenta and you have to know the different air spaces and the colors now that's going to be a, a big part of that test so even though you know the rules and regulations that's like 10 percent of it and most of us know that already because if you're a hobbyist or recreational uh drone person that flies like I did at first, you know that you only could go 400 feet, you know you gotta have them on the site, you know those certain things. And um, that's the easy part. Um, but that's only 10% of the test, so you have to know what you're doing. Then, um, you're going to uh, have the weather reports, the METAR reports, so you have to know how to read the weather reports. It's gonna have things like TS, you're gonna know that's thunderstorms and clouds and things like that. So it's gonna say from this time and this time, what type of weather is it? You're gonna have to know certain things like that. And you're gonna have to know about densities and how to read, you know, uh, north, south, and um, propeller speeds, and if it's low density, what are the propellers? You're gonna have to know, um, you know, different things that I feel like you need to study. I only studied for three days, you know, and I don't suggest people do that because I had to do a lot of cramming and not everybody gonna get all that information in, in three days. The good thing about me is it was fresh in my head. So when I studied, when I went to the test, it kind of was in, it was kind of there. But here's the issue. Remember I told you you only had two hours to take that test. I finished in about an hour and a half. When I went to look back, 
because I had to use that extra half hour to look back. I had to change a couple answers because the questions are tricky. So some of them kind of got me. And um, one of them was the question, I remember one of whom was saying, how high up can you go um, above ground to inspect this tower that was 356 feet? And the multiple choice was like 756, 1125, and 1160, something like that. And I'm thinking, I just guessed because in my head, I'm thinking, hmm, you can't go over 400 feet. That was always in my head the whole time. So when I went back, I realized, wait a minute, I remembered that reading something that said, you can go over 400 feet when you're expecting something, you know, whatever it is, you add 400 feet to that and then you can expect it. So then I realized it was 356 plus the 400, so the answer was 756. And that's what I changed my answer to because I realized, oh, wait a minute, it's 756 because of the 400 feet rule and then it's 356 feet is the tower. So I gotta take a picture of the tower. So I changed that answer. And then there was another one that I almost got mixed up with because it was saying, above above ground it was like a class b airspace or something like that and it was saying the two answers was like 1100 but one of them said 1100 agl and the other one said 1100 mcl and i put agl and i had to change it to mcl because most of the time with maps they're saying that it's usually mcl which is sea level the other one is ground level and usually when it's ground level it's gonna have parentheses. And it's not, they're not gonna really ask that many questions when it come to that. But when they do, you have to pay attention to that. Then you have to realize, you know, AGL is usually the one that has the parentheses. And like I said, it, I, I can go all day with how the test is, but you just have to kind of pay attention to get tricky. Um, they had another question about, you know, propeller speeds and it was like low density, will it go faster or slower? And, and, and what my tip, my biggest tip for you guys, and please listen to me when I say this, bring a magnifying glass. Nobody really said that on their YouTube videos, and I was looking at a lot of them except for one guy. I forgot his name, I wanna shout him out. He helped me out so much because that changed the game for me. And the reason why is a lot of stuff is small, and I had to use that to kinda of see because the air spaces on the maps you have to really read and it's really small and it takes a lot of time if you don't have a magnifying glass. The magnifying glass made me see better and that, you know, it kind of saved time for me. Now, if I didn't have that, it would took a lot of time to figure out some of those answers because I would have to been really looking. I have good vision too. I have 20-20 vision. But luckily with that, I kind of answered questions, some of them quickly and some of them, it took me some time, but a magnifying glass really helped me you know, at least answer at least five or six questions really quick, where some of them, you know, took longer. But if I didn't have that, I would have an issue. So bring a magnifying glass. The test centers will let you have one. Um, also, like I said with the legend, I'm gonna go and say this one more time. Memorize the legend as far as at least know where everything is. Because the bottom left-hand side, they're gonna ask a lot of questions that you have to know the symbols. Like, um, air balloons and military operations it shows you what those symbols mean on the maps and if i didn't study the legend and i just went off the cuff at during the test i would have knew where to look and it took me a lot of time to find these things so know where everything is 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 in a legend even if you don't know nothing about it at least know where to look you know it saves you time because believe me when i tell you this them two hours go quick especially for 60 questions and you wanna go back over it because, you know, like I said, there's some questions that's tricky. So that's why you wanna leave some time where you can have some, you know, a little bit to spare, where you can go over the test. Um, so after the test, you know, you do um, a survey. When you do the survey, then while you're doing the survey, the lady actually printed out my test score and I passed and I was happy. Now, you pass the test, okay, you're great. You think, okay, I, I'm gonna go out there and do jobs. No, I suggest you practice. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I can easily go out there and try to advertise myself and say, listen, hire me. But I'm not confident enough yet because I feel like I still have some work to do. I just passed. So I suggest you go out there and practice. I think now I'm pretty good where I think, you know, I'm good enough where I should get hired, but I'm not rushing it. 
because I know there's still a lot for me to learn. But I think I, I'm, I'm, I've been looking at other people's work and I've been on YouTube seeing people that already, you know, show some of their stuff and that can help you as well and see where you are. And I think I'll do fine. But, you know, I, I still, I want to sharpen my skills. And um, I think everybody should be thinking the same thing after they pass that test, you know, and just kind of compare yourself to everybody else. Also, the one last thing, don't lowball yourself, you know, and what I mean by that is don't take a job and do something pro bono or do something less than what you're worth. And the reason why you can really damage the whole community at that point, because now these realtors might hire you, yes, but it's because you're cheap and they don't want to pay a lot. But then they're gonna start lowballing everybody else as well, you know. So you gotta think about the whole community. It's a it's a drone community out there. And we're all going for the same jobs. It's it's highly saturated. But at the same time, you have to realize that when you do that, they're gonna start going, you know, and lowballing the guys that really have some good work out there because they feel well. I'm paying him only sixty five dollars. Why can't I pay you the same thing? You know, for my quality of work and my time, my gas, going to drive out. I feel like I should be getting paid more. But if everybody's getting only $65 and that's what you're charging, then you're gonna hurt the whole the whole community. You know, um, I don't really have that much more to say, but I do want you all to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any more questions you wanna know, please, please hit me up, put a comment down. Um, and then if you wanna do something where you know, you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, maybe in my inbox, something like that. I will leave my um, Instagram in the link um, on um, below this video. So make sure you look at that, hit me up, let me know what you think, and then go from there. Also, make sure you look at my videos and tell me what you think. Hopefully you like them. And then, uh, you know, you know, you're gonna see some more of me. You're gonna see some more of me. And um, I hope you like this video. I'm gonna give some more and, you know, that's all. Peace out.